Okay, this is crazy. I was planning on making a Mario Maker 2 video, but then I was thinking to myself, you know, it's been like a couple of months since Nintendo updated the game, and after the Link update, I didn't think they were going to update it again. There was no news of anything, there was nothing about Mario Maker, it's like they completely abandoned the game and it's one of their best franchises, but, you know, whew, right when I was about to not make Mario Maker content, look what they post. Right here, the world map update. People have been asking for this, uh, for one, and two, I don't know what they're gonna add, but I wanted them to add something, because you see Mario Maker, with how good it is and all, it's just, like, missing something. There's one thing that make, makes it perfect. And I think that this update is going to have some stuff that will make it perfect. Hopefully it doesn't have stupid stuff like Koopalings or anything. I hate those. I don't know why they keep putting them in games. They're just lame and boring. And after you've seen them in Mario 3, you don't need to see them again. Oh, I guess I forgot to introduce myself. Hey, um, I'm your favorite robot, Chubb. I guess. I normally make Smash content, but I guess I am a memer now, too. As you can see, I am part of the Rob Discord, for Smash Ultimate, of course, and I'm just, you know, looking through the memes and stuff, but it's been a week, so I don't really know what's there until I see this. <sighs> yeah, the... Uh, uh, see, you don't know what you're missing in life, until you see it. This is something I want to wipe from my brain. Anyway, back to the regularly scheduled content. I'm excited. I'm really excited for this because Mario Baker was one of my favorite games on the Wii U. And sadly, people, you know, left it. And then Mario Maker 2 comes out, blasts us with like double the features of Mario Maker 1. And I'm like, oh, I'm so ready for this. Anyway, Let's get into this. I'll set the quality to auto, just so we won't have any hiccups, unlike last time. Actually, why am I on 1080p? I'm recording this in 720. Let's get this started. Three, two, one. React time! Thanks for playing the Super Mario Maker 2 game. Ooh. We'll be releasing the last major update soon. No! Now, let's -a go. This is this the final update? Is a little Ooh! Different. If Mario picks it up, he'll become Super Mario Brothers 2 hey. It's right on Super enemies. Mario USA. Oh, you can pick up enemies? Okay, that's sick. Okay, okay. I might be into this. I might maybe I might be making some levels with this. I thought Link was kind of overpowered and I didn't really know how to design something with that, but this even throw snowballs in snow themed courses. Okay, this actually sounds really fun. The frog suit? It lets you swim through water with ease. Okay, we needed a good way to transport water. <gasps> you can run on water? You're Jesus? Yes! Jesus levels! Ooh, the power balloon. Oh, and this is weird. It's it's like a frog suit version. Super acorn? Wow, they're adding so many powers. The boomerang suit! Oh, that's one of my favorites from the 3D lands. Ooh! Here we go. We're in the 3D world now. We have all the different stuff you stash on your head. Oh boy, this is gonna be amazing to grime around with and tingle and majingle. Ooh. And it looks like everything acts just like it would in the games. Propeller seems a bit more overpowered, but whatever. It's good for three uses. Wear a Goomba mask to become one with the Goombas and fool your foes. Okay, I I really like the Goomba mask. That was a fun little addition. Don the bullet bill mask to gain the power of horizontal flight. Ooh, okay, that's a cool power up. I like that one. That one's new, but I like it. No! Why? Nintendo! Nintendo! Wendy. Morton. Lemon. No! Roy. Iggy. Nobody cares Iggy. about the Koopalies. I mean, for to be brutally honest, this game needed some bosses, but... Ha! <sighs> Koopalings. Dang it. Ooh, the curse key? Anyone who dares pick it up. Oh, man, the temptation to pick it up. Oh, it's that thing from the Mario 2. Okay, that thing scared me as a... Ooh, that thing scared me as a child. 
trampoline can be activated with a switch. Okay, that's a cool addition. I can't wait to use that in levels. You can even use them like this. I mean, that's interesting. Mecha Koopas? Okay, okay, I like that. That's a cool addition. Whoa! Okay, that's sick. I like that one. There's gonna be some crazy level ideas. Oh boy. Oh, that looks great, actually. That looks fantastic. Introducing World Maker. A new mode that lets you create your own worlds. Yeah! So wow! Okay, that's actually kind of intricate. Starting point, I like that. I really like that. Create hills. And change the look of the land in all sorts of ways. Then okay, I don't know how detailed it is. Okay, so you can just select courses. And then put them in. And then boom, you have a world. You can even that's awesome. Oh, okay, okay, I like this. Find yourself matching moving pictures in a bonus stage. Ooh! Ooh! Or taking a warp pipe to a far off island to run through a wonderfully coin filled course. Okay, this really actually looks fantastic. By changing the theme to underground, desert, snow, sky, forest, volcano, or outer space. Huh. In this way, you can make your own. Those are some pretty cool themes. A super world of up to eight worlds and 40 different courses. So, okay. unveil your very own super world in Course World. Oh, way, people can share worlds? All your ideas that couldn't be contained in a single course. Oh my god. With people oh. around the globe. That's amazing. That's so good. Online worlds. People make their own games. SMBX is revived, baby. <laughs> Oh, wow! Ooh! Oh my... Ooh! The third update for Super Mario Maker 2 launches April 22nd. The 22nd! That's Wednesday! Wow! Wow! Okay, hold on. Pause this. I don't want to watch that. Oh, boy! Okay. Okay, there's a lot to digest in this for being four minutes long. Hold on, let me go through this real quick. I just want to talk about some things. So there's a bunch of power-ups. So, for one. So, you got this SMB2 mushroom. So, uh, I, I didn't really play much of Super Mario Bros. USA, but it's definitely different from the original styles. And I knew that it would definitely be difficult to um, add a completely new style like that and have it, you know, work in the game corresponding with all the other styles. So, this is a pretty good idea. You just add it as a power-up in Mario 1, and then they have some extra features. So, what I like about this one is it's not just like your generic, regular, super mushroom that doesn't really do much and just gives you an extra hit point. This one has some added functionality that's really interesting and I think I will use this a lot. For one, as you can see, you can stand on enemies. They don't... you don't actually kill them when you land on them. You can pick them up and throw them at other things as a demonstrated here. And throw them at will. Let's see? Big enemies. And, okay, apparently you can do it with big enemies too. I can't really remember if you could do that in the original, but... Uh, that could also lead to some interesting course designs, and this, this will probably one of my be one of my most favorite power-ups, just because of all the different applications you could do with picking stuff up. I think it would really, it'll really add some depth to the level creation in Mario One. Now, with like the Link costume and stuff, and just all the different things they added in Mario Maker Two on launch, SMB One is actually a really good style now. But this just adds more to it, and I love it. So, let's continue on with the direct. So next is the frog suit. The frog suit lets you become frog so, um, water levels are, you see in Mario games, water levels really aren't that good. I've never been fond of them. I've never heard anyone say they liked a water level from a Mario game. But in SMB3, the frog suit really helped with that, because now, 
you see, swimming is bearable. <laughs> you can actually do it and have some fun while doing it. And, you know, we know how that works. It's very simple. But what I want to talk about is this. Run across its surface. You can be Jesus. You can run across water while carrying something, not sink down. You know, put all your trust in the Jesus suit and run across the water. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, this is a weird one. So they added the pea balloon from Mario World. Now, in the original game, this looked, I believe it was really difficult to control. Just because, you know, your movement was really slow. If you got hurt, you die because you no longer have the power balloon. You'll just fall to your death. I believe there was a level called, what was it, tubular? And... It was just this gauntlet of enemies and enemies, and you had to make it through with, like, the pea balloon or a blue Yoshi or whatever, and that seemed pretty difficult. But this one, if you look at how Mario's Let's controlling, it's, it's not the same way. You don't just have the slow, methodical float of the regular pea balloon. This seems more like a, you know, gust of wind, like the gust bellows item from Smash, just going... <laughs> And you know, you're just flying out into space. That's what this feels like. Only a balloon can muster. Glide. Okay, so next power up is the Super Acorn. Um, I, I never really played Mario U, so I never really got to experience this power up. But it does look pretty cool. And it's definitely not as, you know, useful as a propeller suit. So maybe if you were to have a level that requires some verticality, but you didn't want the supreme overpowerness of the propeller, you could use the Super Acorn and then it wouldn't be as, you know, daunting and such. It's sort of like a nerfed cape feather in my opinion. So maybe it'll do some good in Mario U, but I always prefer the cape feather to this any day, any day. So and then we have the boomerang suit. Um, you probably know how this works. It's just like, say, a boomerang brother. You just throw the thing, it comes back, kills enemies in its path. I really like this suit in Mario 3D Land, so I am very ecstatic about this. And maybe, maybe I'll make another 3D World stage. Um, actually, now that I think about it, I don't even have a... I don't even have Mario Maker videos on my channel, so I might have to do that soon, seeing as there's this update, and I might actually... Be motivated to make some more worlds. Oh, and then we have this. With the boomerang. Well, let me see this. You... So, they added like 10 bajillion new power-ups to 3D World. That actually makes it more of an interesting style than, of course, it already is. So, you got, you know, this cannon box. This thing was so, oh, it was so irritating. Because in the original, you know, it would fire on its own and... There was this level where you were on a moving platform and you had to avoid this stuff. I've had bad times with this power-up. I probably won't use it. The propeller box. Okay. This thing I mainly know from 3D Land. I believe how it worked in that game is you basically got a double jump, but it was insane height. It was more like the propeller suit from from Mario U. I almost said 3D World. Uh, let's see. I want to see how this cannon box works again, because I want to see if it fires automatically or not. The cannon box lets you fire cannonballs from your face. Charge up for long range shots. Okay, from the from this trailer, I can't really tell if it will. But hopefully it doesn't, because that was really annoying, but maybe it's a good way to balance the power up, I don't know. Raise your elevation. Right, and then again, the propeller suit. It looks like they changed this. Uh, let me go back a couple of frames. Well, let me see this. Okay, so as you can see here, looks like there's a little dial, and when you jump, you know, in the original game, it only allowed one. So whoosh! But in this game, you have these three dials, and it looks like that allows for three swooshes. Sorry, it's late in the night. I'm not used to my normal commentary this late. Anyway, you go swoosh, 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 and then you can get to high places and such. And it looks like you can do the whole um, slam on the ground thing, which is good. And then you have this pow box. Uh, I mean, it's it's interesting. Looks like it acts like the red pow is in the game, 
and when you hit your head on something, it does a pow. Wear a Goomba mask. I mean, that's all it is. I, I don't think I'd ever use it. That seems kind of useless. But the Goomba mask seems interesting. Remember that it was in Mario Maker 1. There was a stealth level where there was, like, Goombas going down a secret facility or a toilet or something. And you dressed up as the Goomba amiibo costume. And you sort of just, like, filed along with the lines of Goombas, and that was really cool. I'm thinking someone will make a level like that with this. I think that would be Become super cool. With the Goombas and fool your foes. So it basically right now, nullifies anything enemy-wise. As you can see, not even the Thwomp's full. Oh! This bullet bill thing, this seems sick. So you basically wear a bullet on your head, and you go, zoom, you know, horizontally this time. Not vertically like the propeller, but horizontally. You do a whole bullet thing, you go swoosh, and you could just fly. That seems really interesting. I don't know if it'll be as satisfactory as, say, the um, Cape Feather from Mario World, but this does look like an interesting power-up, and it looks like something I'd use. In the power of I mean, look at this. Doesn't that just look sick? Fly as much as you'd like like these puzzle away. courses. Look at that. That looks amazing. Alright. And then we have... The bad part of the direct, the Koopalings. <laughs> now, I I've never liked the Koopalings. I guess they were fine in Mario 3 because they were new and such, but they just rehashed them, and maybe it was fun seeing them the first time in Wii, but in basically every single Mario game then, it's just had these Koopalings, and they've been really stagnant, stale, never really done anything different. This is just, like, the worst part of the game, in my opinion. I don't even know what I'd use these for. Um, it's just, like, Bowser Jr., but maybe slightly different. I don't know if I'd use it. Let's just skip over that now. Let's be honest, I was kind of harsh on the Koopalings. I mean, I know that I hate them and such, but when you think about it, they just added seven new bosses to the game. And then you can do all the things like give them mushrooms, give them wings, probably. And such like that. And then you can combine it with other enemies. I mean, this will really add some more diversity to the bosses in the game than there already are. So, yeah, I was a bit harsh on the Koopalings. Okay, Koopalings, Koopalings, Koopalings. Okay, let's see what these variety of new parts are. I sort of glanced over these. Okay, so Cursed Key. This is another thing from Mario Brothers 2. I mean, I like the principle, you collect the key, this demon thing comes at you and hurts you and such. Um, it's really interesting. Let's just see how this interacts again. Okay, so... So, one person... Shut up, Google. One person gets the key, and then, let's see. Oh man, the temptation to pick it up. Okay, I can't really tell from this, but it... Okay. I think... Hold on. Let's go back here. I think this little demon thing goes after the person that's holding it. Again, it's hard to tell from this trailer because of all the people running around, but uh, I'm thinking that whoever gets the key is the one that's going to be traumatized by the demon. I mean, that sounds fair to me, right? Or not. Okay, so this is a feature that seems interesting. So, there's some trampolines. They aren't active when one block state is on, the on but when they hit the block state, boom, they're trampolines. So, the trampolines in the normal game, I mean, they're fine, but these, these probably have some extra implications. You could probably do some sort of puzzly thing or speedrunny thing with them. I'd say they'd be cool. Maybe not the biggest of additions, though. Yeah, so I forgot to mention that there's now on-off blocks in 3D World! This is crazy! So, the only reason why I wasn't using 3D World mainly was because there's no on-off blocks. You couldn't do crazy contraptions that make levels really cool. Like, remember the Mario Brothers? Well, no, you don't, because I never posted it. But anyway, there are on-off blocks in 3D World. You can now do, like, the binary type stuff that you could do in the classic games in 3D World. Th this is revolutionary! for good creators, because now you can do so much crazy stuff in all the game styles. Whew. I love this update so much. Like, what's the point of that? I mean, I guess that's a cool little thing, but 
I mean, I don't really know the applications of them. Okay, these things, the Mecha Koopas. These things really weren't useful in the original Mario World. Because, you know, you just stepped on them, they'd explode after a few seconds. And that's really all they did. They didn't even have much of a kick to them. And then, I guess they were using the final Bowser fight. But let's just look at the things that these can do. So, I mean, they're still... Yeah, as you can see, you can still use them like that. But then, there's these variants of them. Like, these red ones shoot little bullet things, missile things. It, I mean, it looks like just a different version of a homing bill launcher, but... I don't know, but I guess... You can, this is like a homing bill launcher, but you can kill it, which actually could be interesting. I might actually have to play around with that. The blue ones attack with okay, these guys are sick. I am definitely going to use these. I mean, it, it it's just lasers in a Mario game. When do you ever see that? I mean, I guess there was that time in, I think it was Mario 3, could have been Mario World, could have been both. Where you had the Bowser statues, they went, eh, and then they could kill you. This time, they're, like, straight shots. Laser beams. And it not I mean, I like that. That's really cool. That's really cool. I'm gonna use that. And then these they nighttime ones fly. I mean, my people need me, and such, I guess. Oh, and they shoot lasers. Well, that's interesting. And then we have this feature. This... This is huge. Also, that's a penis. World map feature. Before, we could just make levels. So you could call the game Super Mario Level Maker. Now, now, you can make entire worlds in the game. I don't know if you're restricted to just the space, but now the game can actually be called Super Mario Maker. Because Mario games contain levels in worlds. Before we had levels, now we have worlds and levels. So it is finally Super Mario Maker. Because you can make a Mario game. This is now an infinite Mario game, people. Before it was an infinite Mario level game. Now it's an infinite Mario game. People will probably recreate the original Mario Brothers and have a world with it. Now that sounds intriguing, doesn't it? And maybe people could make Kaizo Mario World and Mario Maker? I don't know. Anything could happen now. We have a world maker. We don't have to string together levels with tiny little names because, you know, the World 1-1 took up 10 characters. Now you have a world map and you can label your levels however you want because you have a world. You have a life system. You have a life system, you have a coin system. It looks like lives and coins will actually matter and it's not just for the endless challenge anymore. We can actually design levels that have an impact on gameplay. So you, if you're making easy and difficult levels, you do want to put the easy first or the difficult last, or if you want to be devilish, put all hard levels. But in five lives, <laughs> People just can't keep retrying your levels anymore. They have to actually play your game. I mean, I'm gonna love this. This looks fantastic. Let's just rewatch this section of the trailer because I'm sure I missed a lot of stuff. So you have the Mario. He's going through the worlds. It's really cool. A new mode that lets you create your own worlds. Select and place panels to build a route for your. Oh, you can change the amount of lives. Of course you can. Oh, hold on, hold on. What am I doing? What am I doing? Am I stupid? Let's pause the game. So, I don't know what I was thinking. I could just pause. So here we go, world maker. So it looks like you're restricted to this space, but that's fine. I mean, you could do a lot with this space. So, as you can see, we have the eraser, the undo, and the reset. This core spot like, this looks different. This is no longer a core spot. This is a course. This is an inner core spot. <laughs> that, that's what they should call this. The inner core spot. Because you have intermingling courses. That works perfectly. Whoa! Nintendo, hire me. 
<laughs> okay, so anyway, you have the intercourse spot, and this thing is probably where you'll save the world and such. Um, <laughs> that is actually perfect. Okay, and then you have this. That's probably just the menu to everything else. All right, so from this, it looks like you can have a starting position, and then you have your ending position with the castle, of course. And then it looks like you can have level spots, of course. And then you can make these hills. I don't know. I, I need to rewatch that part. I wasn't really paying much attention. So. Okay, so this is like the first little scene. So you start out with the starting position. You can probably move this to wherever you want. Same goes with the castle. And it looks like there's some extra things up here. I don't know if there are any other things locked behind a menu but it doesn't look like it since I don't see anything here um, so you have tiles of all different sorts you have a starting tile and then you have or, or dead end tile I guess you have a straight tile a corner tile a branch path tile a um, curve tile a bridge tile and then this looks like a hill tile for hills and such and then you have a blank tile so we just go through let's just look at this guy make it so he just Select selects one and he just sort of taps it along and makes a road okay okay and it looks like he was clicking stuff and such I don't exactly know what that was about maybe it's just like a confirmation thing so your levels actually can connect and it won't do that if there's like breaks and such but I'm sure that doesn't mean anything because there was no extra options there Build bridges. Okay, uh, I don't know if they did a jump cut there, or if that's like a hotkey bind, but it looks like from that he just erased and built a bridge. You, you probably, there might be a way to do that, but I'd say everything will be accessed here and that was a jump cut, but I don't really know. Um, just looking at this, now that I'm looking at the tiles here, I, I want to see how he built that too, but... Looking at this, this looks like the level amount, because I believe it said you could have 8 worlds with up to 40 levels, so that means 5 levels per world, basic division and such. So this looks like the different levels. You have four. You can have up to 4 basic levels, and then you have the castle level, which makes sense, so that's kind of cool. Uh, and then you have these pipes. The, this is just things where you go in one, leads you to the other, that's why there's only two. Maybe that means that there is... Just two for one to go in, one out the other, or you can have two of those in and outs, like the doors. And these are the mushroom houses. I'm noticing that this one has a star above it, so maybe you're able to hold on the mushroom house and pick a different one, because all that we saw was the star one. Maybe. Okay, let me go back a tiny bit. I want to see how they made this hill. Build bridges. Create hills. Oh, okay. So... They did select the bridge off camera. Okay, and then with the hill, they just literally placed it in, and then it made it the ladder. Hold on, let me see this again. Because I want to really see how this is. Okay, so you have the hill. And then, you could probably place whatever ground on top. And then, you just like drug the thing. Let me look at this again. <laughs> Sorry. I'm tired. Build bridges. Okay, so here he is. He selected the hill. Alright, so he just plops in the hill, and then he erases the straight one, builds the T one, and then it automatically makes a ladder. Okay, so this is actually pretty intuitive. If any of you have ever used Super Mario Bros. X World Engine or Level Engine, you'll know it is not that intuitive for people that aren't advanced in the computer sciences. So, this is really good for people that aren't really computer techie, but maybe they're able to... Maybe we can actually do stuff with this. It looks very basic, but yet very good. Because really, there's not a lot in a world map besides the atmospheric presence. And change the look okay. So let's just look at this menu real quick. So, it looks like you're able to select blank pieces of ground and add little backgrounds to it. So far, it looks like there's three, just like the semi-solids. Alright, this one is definitely based off Super Mario World. 
This one, that's actually bell trees, so that's definitely 3D World. And then this one is the little icebergs from Mario U. So it looks like, and as I'm looking here, it doesn't look like there's a way to change the style of world maps. So this is going to be a Super Mario World themed world maker, which is fine with me. I actually really like Mario World. But, it looks like they're adding features from different games. Since, you know, this looks like Mario U, that's 3D World, that looks like a Mario 3 castle in my opinion. Anyway, let's continue. Think of the land in all sorts of ways. Then, place the courses you've made along the path. Okay, so it looks like what happened here is when he placed the level marker Maybe you could just leave it be, but it looks like automatically when you place a level marker, it'll tell you to select a course, which is fine. That seems intuitive. You can even change your course icons. Okay, let's look at this. Let's look at this real quick. So when you click on the level thing, then you can change the course, of course, but then you have all these different sections. Let's just go over these. So you have normal. This is just for like your normal ground levels, anything and such. Then you have this, the dreaded water level, or an island level. I mean, those were in Mario World. Actually, the first time you came across this, it was one of a island levels with like floating things. This looks like a, um, what, is, like a quicksand pit thing that would definitely be used in deserts. And then this looks like a snow pit thing. So... You have like a normal, a water, a desert, and a snow. That's fine. And then you have a forest themed one. I don't know. Maybe someone will make a forest of illusion type thing. I don't even know if you could properly do that, but that looks cool, I guess. And I guess it could also be a good decoration thing. Of course, the ghost house. Classic. Classic. You. That's a good one. And then the towers. A staple from the... Um, it's a staple from the... Mario, new Mario Bros. games, but I guess they had towers at every Mario World thing until the final fight, so maybe, don't know for sure, don't quote me on this, but you might be able to change the castle into, say, the tower, or maybe even any of these. And then you have the airship, of course, so that would be where, like, you know, in Mario 3D World, that'd be where the boom boom fights are and such. And then you have these, which are just an assortment of enemies. This doesn't look like anything really that cool. You might find yourself match okay, so, as you can see here, Mario climbs up the thing, and then when he does this, there's a little play. And then you say, let's go, or Mexico. And then you play the little thing from Mario 3. Now, we weren't given anything about the Mushroom House in particular besides this, so it's possible this is the only thing in a mushroom house, but it, since, you know, I said things about the stars there on top of the mushroom house, it's possible there are different types. I, I don't know if that'll actually give you any items or not, it might just be a fun little gag. Alright, let's look at this pipe. Okay, so, hmm. <laughs> when your girlfriend sneaks in on you in the bedroom. So, Mario jumps into the pipe, we press enter, we go da -da 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 -da, right? And then here we go, we're right here. And this looks like, well, I thought this was a quicksand thing, but I guess it could also be used to represent a coin level, sort of like the golden train in Mario 3D World. So anyway, he goes through this, and then bada book, bada boom, he gets some fun little coins. Oh, let's look at these themes real quick. I, I'm excited to look at these. So that was ground before, and that looked pretty nice. Okay, this cave theme. I mean, I enjoy this. I, I like the blackness of the in the darkness of the border. It makes it look very eerie. It's a very atmospheric touch. Oh, and it looks like you're able to remove certain ground pieces and then you can make like water basins and such which looks awesome okay desert this again looks really good i like how i don't think there was a desert at all in mario world in fact that was probably supposed to be chocolate island but 
I mean, it, it's Mario 3-esque, but it's Mario World. It's a very interesting mashup, and I like it. Desert. Snow. Okay. Sky. Oh, wow, I am butchering this. Okay, snow. I mean, it looks like ground, there's still water and such, but it's snowy. I've always liked the snow theme in Mario games, so... I mean, I'm excited for this. I like the little touch with the snow, people. That's really fun. Thank you. Oh, it looks like there's snow pokies, too. So those enemies, I guess, do change depending on the world type. All right. Sky. And then we have the sky theme. This is another one of my favorites. Actually, I might like this better than snow. And it looks really good in this game. I like the little shading under the clouds. And it looks really nice. Also, I've noticed with the castle, remember, let me go back to the ground theme really quick. Where was that? Here we go. Remember in the ground thing? Oh, well, there's Peach in the castle. I didn't know that was a thing. But when we were in the world editor, that's not the world editor. As you can see, it's a black castle. So it looks like you'll be able to change what the castle looks like depending on the world possibly I don't know for sure don't quote me on that just like last time let's go back to the sky terrain where was that that's snow I don't know where sky went Sky. there it is ooh I skipped it anyway I saw everything I wanted to do in sky alright forest this one is like really reminiscent of forest of illusion and I like it also Something really cool. You know how in the night theme, the water turns to poison? Look here. It's poison. I mean, that's a nice reference to yourself, Nintendo. Ooh, and they even put a little poison mushroom there. That's really neat. Is that what they're called? They're called poison mushrooms, right? I don't know. Forest. Volcano. Okay. Volcano. This one, just with the dark background and with the whole long corridor, this one really reminds me of Super Mario Bros. 3. Because, you know, at the start you had the thing, you had the gauntlet of airships and such. This is very reminiscent of that, and the dark background also reminds me of Mario 3. Really cool volcano theme, and I definitely like this way better than, say, Mario U's volcano theme. Or outer space. Alright, this is another pretty good one. This, I guess you could, if you're a new Mario fan, you could compare this to whatever it was called, Star Road from Mario U. But this is definitely reminiscent of Star Road from Mario World. It was the place where there was the giant star in the center, you had five different levels, and when you did this, you'd basically be able to transport yourself to different portions of the Mario World Island. Very cool feature. Very cool feature. I like this. I like this a lot. In this way, you right. can make your own Super Mario game. Yep. A super mm -hmm. world of up to eight worlds and 40 different courses. Alright, like I said, there was um, eight worlds, four different courses, up to five courses each. And it looks like when you're doing this, that you have your own little title screen. Super Username World. I don't know if you can change this. Most likely not. This looks like a thing that's just built in and based on your name. So say mine would be Super Shub World. Actually, that has a nice ring to it. I'm okay with that. So... Unveil your very own super world. All right, all right. So, again, there was the little icon there that said super worlds and such. And then when you do this, it looks like, again, I don't really know what's going on here. But it looks like you can just sort of scroll through the different worlds made by different people, as suggested by these little cloud things. Oh, I like that these are based off of all the different themes. That's cool. And then it looks like it shows you, again, super username world. In this case, it's Risa from Japan. And they have 35 hearts all together. That's sad, but that's probably more than I have. And then it shows how many worlds you have. Three. That's pretty obvious, considering this is your levels. Twelve. So that looks like a little short one, but I'd say people enjoy it. It looks like and appears to be that you can either play this by yourself or you can play it with a ton of people. Now that's going to be fun. You can have the true, authentic Mario experience. I I'm enjoying this so far. Course world. That way, you can take all your ideas that couldn't be contained in a single course and share them with people around the globe. So, just like he said, there are a lot of people 
that love theming courses around certain things and they want to share it with a ton of people, but, you know, they'd have to share all 40 million level codes. Well, this way, they can have themed levels and such and can form them into their own little universe and then they can share those with people, I guess, somehow. But it looks like the actual designs of this can get pretty awesome because this is a very good looking volcano world. Maybe there's more decor options to this than I realized. Oh, look at all the li I didn't even notice this until now. Look at all the little Marios and such and the little dry bone shells. That's really cute. I like that. I like that. Alright, and then we have the recap. So, um, in summary, uh, this update was good. I wouldn't say it's the best update because it didn't contain- well, actually, this is probably one of the best updates to Mario Maker 2, seeing as there have only been two so far, and maybe two ever. This seemed like it was going to be the final update, because they said, in the beginning, somewhere, the final major update. So they might still have bug fixes and stuff, but this looks like the last update with a ton of features. And you know it's a good note to end on. There were a ton of different power-ups displayed. There were a ton of different things and such. Just little quality of life stuff, I guess. But then, the big takeaway. The World Maker. I am so excited for this. I can't wait to jump into Mario Maker 2 on Wednesday and see how this goes. This video will probably be posted tomorrow sometime. I'm not going to edit it much. And... Well, I guess I'll see you all in Mario Maker two days from now. Well, when this comes out one day from now. Um, yep. I, I'm excited for this. I hope all you Mario Maker fanatics are too. I will see you all in the next video, I guess. So, I don't have an outro. Don't know if I ever plan on making one. I might just end it out or something. I, I don't know.